Good morning, folks. Welcome to a day in life at Metal Quest, one of the most beautiful plants, automated completely. Uh, my name is N.C. Kishore. I'm from Delmia, uh, focusing on the fabrication uh, portfolio. So what you're looking at here is uh, a point cloud of the entire factory here. What we have done is we have built a couple of uh, virtual machines uh, that you see here. One is a mil, mil turn and the other one is a three axis uh, mill. So this is something that we have uh, virtually built in Delmia. We have programmed it, we have generated G codes for that. And that's what we want to see. This, what you're seeing here is in the context of the entire plant. With this introduction, um, what we want to do is take you through uh, what it takes to program a particular machine, generate the G codes, run it, build a part. Now, to help with that, I have my colleague here, John Milbury, who's going to take over and uh, talk about the Milton, and I'll be back again. John? Hi, I'm John Milbury with SolidWorks. Uh, pleasure to see all of you here today. What we're going to do to start out is we're going to we're going to take a look at SOLIDWORKS and the 3D Experience Cloud today. And in particular, we're going to cover the following items. One is it's how we create the manufacturing product for the cloud. The second is, is how do we create the proper block size and position our part inside the stock. The third thing that we're going to do is, is how do we add sketch geometry? You know, for areas such as keepouts and uh, for things like stock boundaries. Next, we're going to cover how we save this to the cloud, right? And we're going to include revision and maturity life cycle as well. And then finally, we're going to come back and we're going to revise the manufacturing product. So, let's get started. So, this first segment, we're going to create the manufacturing product structure in SolidWorks for the cloud. So you can see that we've got a part here in SOLIDWORKS. What we're going to do is we're going to use the power of the API to automatically create an assembly structure that has our stock material, as well as a placeholder for our sketch geometry. Notice too that all of the different components now have the very same name as the original design part. So just like that, we're able to create a complex structure in just a couple of seconds using the API automation. So the SOLIDWORKS API can automate repetitive workflows, right? The example that I just showed you reduced a 20 minute exercise down to one minute. And the takeaway is that automation can result in quality improvement and time savings. So let's take a look at size and position the stock for the NC programming. Here what we're going to do is we're going to use assembly mates and we're going to position the part directly within the block itself. From here what we can do is we can position the part using mates and we can center this directly in our material. So we've got one more axis to go. Let's go ahead and make some parametric change to the overall geometry. And with that, we've completed the sizing of the geometric block that we're going to use to do the NC programming. So real quick, a takeaway. Parametric solid modeling really allows you to make rapid changes to your geometry. Assembly mates are easier than robots and translating and rotating bodies in space. And changes made to the part automatically update in the assembly and take into account their positions. Next, let's take a look at adding sketch geometry to support the NC programmer. Here you can see that we can just go into the product structure itself to a CAM geometry solid part, which we use as a container. From here, we can go ahead and we can add sketch geometry. In this case, we're going to create a keep out area. And easily and quickly, we've created a sketch. Let's add some color to that so it kind of stands out. And we're going to go ahead and just save all this hard work that we've done, right? And just like that, we're able to add the sketch geometry. 
So takeaway, 2D geometry is easy to create for boundaries, clamps, and keep out zones. The 2D sketch geometry is contained in its own component for easy access. And of course, sketch geometry aids in faster programming times and improved qualities. Next, let's go ahead and let's take a look at a save to the cloud with revision and maturity life cycle of this SolidWorks manufacturing product. Here you can see directly from within SolidWorks, we can access the cloud. We're gonna do a save with options. And we're simply going to type in a revision comment like initial upload. And just like that, our components are on their way. We're actually creating a digital twin of these components up on the cloud. We're also gonna monitor their convert status. And as they're converted and uploaded to the cloud, you can see that the convert status automatically updates to let us know. Now let's come in and let's drag and drop one of our components right into the cloud itself. And here we're gonna drop it into Delmia, shop floor machining application. And you can see that that information that we've done in SolidWorks has come across to the cloud cleanly and is ready for NC programming. Two quick takeaways. Storage in the 3D Experience cloud is automatically backed up and it's super secure, right? Revisions are automatically maintained and you're always working on the latest version. And remember, as customers, you save the expense and time by allowing the cloud to store and manage your products. So finally, let's take a look at revising the manufacturing product. You know, how do we do this? So let's go ahead and let's begin by going back to SolidWorks where this design began. And what we're gonna do is we're going to lock the product and lock it for a change that we wanna make. So SolidWorks, it's simple as just saying lock. And we now have the ability to overwrite or to write into these documents. So with that, we've locked these out. We're gonna go ahead and go back into our sketch geometry. And we're gonna add some new sketch geometry. And sometimes that's all an NC programmer wants to do or needs to do. So we've done that. We'll go ahead and we'll save it here in the local cache. And then once again, we're gonna go ahead and simply save with options. We're going to bump the version numbers, the revision numbers. And then we'll go take a look at it on the cloud. You can see that the A revision on two of the components turned to B. The convert status is just now completed. And with that, we can go back and take a look at these changes propagate on the platform. And here we're gonna go ahead and replace by the latest revision. And you can see that that construction geometry has now come in and is updated. So I wanna thank you for this quick overview of SolidWorks and how we get information up to the cloud. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to my esteemed colleague, NC Keyshore. Hello folks. So I wanna talk a little bit about the, uh, our platform and its values and, uh, and, and, and uh, what it means to, to have, to be on the platform on the cloud. So the platform, the key, the key thing about the platform is communication. So everybody is in sync, what you see here, every cell could be monitored, and everything is on the cloud. So everybody stays in sync with a unique information. There is no replication of information on the platform, right? So it is unique. And I would like to take you through uh, some of the key um, uh, features uh, of, of machining. So you can see what some of the advanced features, right? So what you see here is the power of uh, the platform, which is also the fact that we can capture and reuse information. Now this is, this is very powerful. This reduces the uh, overall lead time for programming a given part. Uh, what you see here is uh, about uh, number of parts on a, on a pallet here. And what we are do gonna do is just reuse 
a program that was done in the past. And this is how quickly you could use it, right? So what you see here is the interface for reuse. And we are also able to link this particular process to the template. And if there's any change in the template, we can also apply it to these processes. So what you just saw there is we just imported some of those operations that were captured in the platform. And anybody who has access to the platform can do this. And we just imported that. And, uh, and we're also able to replicate. So you have one set of operations for one part, and we can simply replicate it, repeat it. Now, this is all saving time for programming the part, right? And we can have uh, multiple parts, different kinds of parts, and reuse any of these templates coming into one particular cell. Now, what you see here is once that's the second section of the, of the operations there, right there. And again, we can uh, repeat those operations. We can uncheck what we don't want. We have the flexibility to do that. Now, what comes in with the template is, that, is the tool pass, the cutting tools that I use, uh, the, the approaches, retrack, the macros, all this in this particular cell, right? It comes right in. Now, just in a matter of less than five minutes, you're able to program all these parts uh, with the power of reuse. Now we'll be able to run the tool paths on this. And also do some material removal uh, simulation so you can check for collisions and, and so forth. So here, as it's less than five minutes, we're able to just reuse and uh, replicate and run the tool paths. So what you're looking at here is one of the cells uh, that we saw in the point cloud in the context. That's the mill turn. Okay, and uh, these are the operations that were, that were developed here. And on the right side here, what you see here is a machining wizard, which basically takes you through a sequential flow of uh, steps to get this particular operation, uh, the operations done here, right? So there's a lot of intelligence built into this. I'm just going to run this cell, and uh, you can take a look at. But you see the uh, the power of simulation. You're able to simulate the the G codes and look for collisions. And this is the internal trading that's happening here. There's part transfers. There's there's a lot of power in uh, in, in in emulating what you really see on the shop floor in a virtual environment you will be able to validate your programs. And again, all this is on, on the platform. Uh, it could be uh, reused by, by the NC programmers for another part of a similar kind. So that was the part transfer. And once this is done, we'll be able to generate the G codes and, uh, and simulate the G code as well. Now, in order to talk about post-processing, what do we have on the platform for that? Uh, my colleague, uh, John, is going to come and talk again about it. John? Thank you. So, NC brings up a great question. Um, how do we get what we've seen so far on the screen, how do we get this to G code, right? We do that with uh, post-processors. So what we're going to use is we're going to use ICAM Foundation. And ICAM Foundation is an agreement that we've recently made with ICAM to provide post-processing capabilities for simple two-axis contouring machines such as water jets, lasers, plasmas, as well as, of course, three-axis CNC mills. But we're also going to include three plus two positioning for the mills. And we're also going to include lays, two axis, but also simple mill turn machines, which are basically going to be mill turn machines that have a single spindle and a single turret. So here you're looking at the environment. What we can do is we can come up and we can open up a post processor. And we've got a number of different post processors here. The way that this works is that we can literally go through and answer some questions about how the machine tool wants the G-code. 
we can go through all of these different questions. Then we can also come in here and be able to do what we call post-processor customization. So we're going to have the ability to be able to control a very complex language that actually keys on the app source and the events in the cutter location file. Now eventually what this is going to allow us to do is to get into a simulation environment where we're actually processing some of these cutter location files. And we'll just do OK right here. And we're now in an area called Generac. And here what we can do is we can take a look at the input and app source and very quickly step through the output to the G-code file that goes into the machine controller. It's a beautiful environment, very sophisticated. With that, um, I hope you've enjoyed, enjoyed this portion of ICANN. And uh, I'll turn it back over to NC. Yeah, I just would like to conclude on, the, on one of the key points here, which is we have a, we have a beautiful community. And uh, the fabrication community has got a, a lot of customers, users, and there's a lot of questions that people post. We, uh, and the R&D is also part of, it, of, of the community. And uh, we also use the community for uh, sharing, sharing uh, uh, new updates, uh, tips and techniques, and so on, tips and tricks. So this is what the community looks like. So I would like to encourage all of you to be a part of the community. So this is the community here for Delmia Fabrication. You can Google it, be a part of it. And uh, I guess with, uh, with that, uh, I would like to conclude this presentation for you. Any, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, John.